Wait, what? I can do that? This is Eric Bell with Wait, What? Financial matters that matter for business and the people that own them. Welcome to this episode of Wait, What? Financial matters that matter. I'm fortunate today to have Steve Getman and Tom Hawthorne of Insignia Industries, both co-founders of that company. They specialize in web building and also digital advertising and marketing. Thanks for being here, guys. Good to be here. Good to be here. You know, one thing about you guys that I really appreciate is everybody knows I'm kind of tech stupid, for lack of another word. And I really appreciate how you came in and fixed my whole website, did my design my website, helped me with my logo, uh, did everything for me. All I do is just pay you. I appreciate that. Stayed Absolutely. in my lane. You guys stayed in your lane. We made it all happen. Absolutely. Can you guys give us, us the audience some background on both of you? Oh, I'm Tom. This is Steve. Together, we've got 40 plus years in uh, marketing, digital marketing, web development, computer. Everything digital. So email, websites, apps, right. social media. Uh, we've basically been in the digital marketing and advertising business since there was a digital marketing and advertising business. Seems like there's a heightened focus on that right now with COVID, people being home trying to push their businesses out, trying to get just more visibility in terms of their business because you're not driving down the street and seeing it anymore. you got to see it on the internet. Yeah, that, that's a trend that's been going on a really long time, 20 plus years now where spend has been shifting from traditional you know, TV, radio, print to digital for a couple of reasons. One, it, at least it used to be really cheap. And more importantly, it's, it's very measurable. You can kind of tell what someone has done if they've clicked on an ad, come to your website, did they fill out a form? Did they not fill out a form? What else did they do? So you can get a lot of information about what your money bought you. Right. You know, you and I were talking, Steve, about marketing. You said marketing still the same. But to me, how you market has changed significantly. You, I mean, you touched on that a little bit, but you said you don't need new bells and whistles and all that kind of stuff. You just have to put it in a different format. The basic premise of advertising and marketing hasn't changed in since there was advertising, it was you have to have an offer, you need to have a message, you need to have a brand. Uh, all of the new technologies that have come across the, the way, whether it be social media or websites or going back, you know, emails, they all just basically use those same premises. They're just different channels to reach people. Yeah, that's the tactical part of it. You know, what the tool that you're going to use, but you need to start out with a message. You need to start out with a brand. And a lot of people, I think, get confused and they start a business and they think oh, I got to get on Instagram and I got to start taking a bunch of pictures and post them and they may head off in the wrong direction and and depending on your business Instagram may not have been the right choice it might have been LinkedIn or it may be traditional mail because um, wow. direct mail is still out there and it's still being used mm -hmm. it could be an email campaign it, it, there's a lot of different approaches and that's where we try to come in and help people with their approach. Okay, so it's kind of a needs-based, client-driven approach. Right. Learn their business, learn mm -hmm. what they need to do, and then try the different aspects geared towards their solution. And tailored towards whatever their budget might be. So right. there's small companies that have very tiny budgets. There's big companies that have you know, multi-million dollar budgets. So, you know, back to marketing, let's say someone's in print and they realize that's kind of obsolete for them. You can help them transition, or how does that go? Tell me what your process is. Right. So we'd evaluate the materials they currently have. Right. We'd evaluate what their current approach is. Some of it was probably working. Some of it may not have been working. We'll kind of lay it all out and decide what new approaches to try. And we may do A-B testing on something, but see which one's going to work for them and spend the time to figure it out. You know, until I met you guys, I didn't have Facebook. I didn't have Instagram. I have it now. I was never a believer in it. I probably should have been. But there's a lot of people out there like me. Why should they be looking at that as Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, all well, that stuff? Well, Facebook and Instagram specifically because that's where the eyeballs are right now. There are people spending hours and hours a day on Facebook and mobile apps, too. I mean, there are advertising units within all of the apps on your phone or most of the apps on your phone. People spend about five hours a day looking at their phone. That's what they're watching. They're not watching TV as much. They are watching on-demand video, but a lot of that is even on the computer screen as well. You know, something that I like that you did, Steve, and I don't know. If, so I have my page or my um, my landing page, my website, but also when I look at it on the phone, 
it looks good too. I mean, is that you? you is that actually, automatic or is no, that? No, it's not automatic. But you have to design for the phone first. Now, probably five or six years ago, phones became more than half of website visits, uh, just because people, everyone has one. Mm -hmm. uh, people don't always use their computer. It sits at home. They always have their phone with them, so they're looking at it when they're in the car. Sometimes while they're driving, they're looking at it uh, when they're sitting in a waiting room. They're they're always looking at their phone. So any website you do, I would actually say the mobile experience is far more important than what it looks like on a desktop, although you still want it to look good on a desktop. It'll vary a little bit depending on your industry. If you're a corporate business, you may get a little more traffic on desktop versus the actual mobile. Somebody may pull it up on their laptop or their tablet rather than their phone when they're in the car or without with a friend. If you're more entertainment, your immediate restaurant, then mobile is 70, 80, 90% of the people that are pulling up your site are going to be mobile. Yeah. Yep. And so the way we work is it's called responsive design. We make sure that the site is the way we want to see it on those three platforms, which are mobile, tablet, and desktop. You know, what's cool that you guys did for me is you put this calendar thing on my website to where it, and it comes on my phone. I, I can see where I got appointments and who's kind of come in, who wants to talk to me, those type of things. What was that, Steve? I forget what that was called. Uh, that was called Calendly. There, okay. There's a couple different offerings that do kind of a similar function. Calendly happened to be a free plugin for what you needed. So if why pay for something and you don't have to. But a lot of that actually kind of feathers into marketing automation, which is another big thing right now is where someone comes to your website, they fill out a form that goes to your phone instantly, right? So you can reach out to them either. Most importantly, you can reach out to them how they want to be communicated to. So do they want you to contact them via email? Then you can email them. Do they want you to text message them? You can text message them. Do they want uh, a chat right on the website? You can do that too. Actually, I think we put that on your site. So you can basically communicate with the consumer or your potential customer in the way that they are most comfortable with. And that reduces the amount of friction between them being a potential customer and being a customer because you just make it easy for them. You know, and Tom, your point about restaurants, I was just at one last night, didn't know which one I wanted to go to. So I looked for restaurants in my area where I was at that particular time and they all popped up. So that's, like you said, they're more on the phone versus a computer or right. a desktop yeah, laptop. A lot of them are, are bringing in reservation apps and plugging into that market so that People can just take care of it all right there on their phone. And you guys are experienced in all those areas. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Is there any limitations geographically for you guys? I mean, you work nationwide or? We've worked nationwide. Uh, we used to do a lot of work for some major automotives, both within the U.S. and Canada. We did a couple of projects even in the uh, Middle East. We say automotive uh, dealerships? No, we worked for OEMs. So uh, okay. Ford, Chrysler, Jeep, Ram, Kia. We also worked for uh, dealer groups which were, um, you'll have, say, 70 dealers that are in a geographic area. They'll pool funds to go to market within their region. And then individual dealers, too, which they also have their own marketing budgets. We didn't do as much work for the individual dealers, but the Tier 2 part of it, which is the regional groups, we did a ton of work for them. What? Um, we would take the national message of whatever it was for their program and push it out through the, through like the Rocky Mountain dealers group or whatever that would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, that was actually, I'd say, one of our most successful campaigns. I guess we could say it was Ford. They had five sales events a year, and we would structure a, uh, a sweepstakes uh, around each of those five events. So they were you know two months on, usually one month off, two months on. And we then came up with an extension of that campaign that could be used regionally. So you've got Ford who's paying for the kind of nuts and bolts of the campaign. They're paying for the prize. They're paying for the website. They've made that investment. Then we could leverage that investment on a regional basis, do some additional marketing for them specifically via email, via their regional website, via what else did we do? We did all the social media. So well. Yeah, social media. And then we would also extend it down to the individual dealer level. So say a dealer who sells 100 cars a year, a right? fairly small dealer, they could have a sweepstakes on their website where they're giving away a $30,000, $35,000 prize. Probably not feasible for them to do that on their own, but they're leveraging, again, the OEM's money and then the region's money and then marketing to their specific customers. And it just really amped up. I think one year we collected over a million leads for Ford. Right? Wow. 
And they weren't just kind of your bunk sweepstakes. They did convert, and the ROI on the programs did two, three, four, five times what they were paying for the programs. They got the value out of it. So it was definitely something that did work for everyone that was involved. Yeah, we, we did it for several years. We went back through all the years of the marketing we did for poor. We, we sold over a billion dollars worth of vehicles. And we could tell that because we had the leads that we had collected, and you can match those back to sales. Yeah. Did all the sales match for it. Now, what's up with Ford now? They take it in house, or what are they doing now? So they took a lot of stuff in house. Yeah. Then they're not doing as much as they were. Mm. Yeah. So we worked for well, we worked directly for Ford on some projects, but our main client was Ford's agency of record, and their budget got cut back in 2016 by about 220 million dollars. So that budget cut kind of spread all the way downhill trickle down yeah a lot of the work was taken from them too ford kind of spread things around and they have their own it's not a ford company but it's a company that is owned by some ford friends and they they kind of put the work through that it's a partnership between the oem and some of the dealers so they use that for a lot of their advertising marketing I want to ask you about coding, Steve. How does that kind of stuff work? Do you guys do all that kind of stuff also? I'm a developer slash coder. Uh, Tom's on the creative side. So coding, is that writing software? Is that the same thing? You're writing code that makes the computer do what you want it to do. Okay. And Tom comes up with what things should look like. I'm the one who makes them work the way that they're supposed to. And for the last several years, you know, we've had projects that were too big for one person to do. So I have a team, I actually have a team both onshore and offshore, depending on the project Mm -hmm. that we can bring in to do projects of any size. And we can also do it very cost efficiently because when they're not working on stuff, we're not paying them. So you can drill down and even tailor something even more specific to what they want then. Yes. Yeah. And we can pick the people that have the the exact skill set that we need. I stay focused on architecture and how things should work. And Mm -hmm. then most of the actual development, I manage teams that do that. And then same with Tom, to some extent with the creative, he's kind of a creative director. And we also have some people that can help us out if we need additional help. Yeah, for the simple, easy projects, I kind of just, it takes longer to explain it than it does to just do it. Right. I'll get it done. But if it's a bigger, longer project, then I've got people that can come on and take over and I get what I need out of them. That's kind of the trick is to get what you need and not get something where you have to go back and forth four or five times. Well, Steve went back and forth with me like seven or eight times. Well, you with, with clients <laughs> is one thing, you know, that's that's yeah. kind of par for the course to get you to where you're happy with what you see. But you don't want to have to do that with the designers, you know. Tell them what I want. I want it the first time. I'm just glad I was on the on the end of the phone that I was, and Steve was on his end because I don't have the patience Steve had with me. You were actually pretty easy to deal with. Uh, we had another client that was an e-commerce site that they knew what they wanted, so we gave them what they wanted, and oh, well, turns out that's not what they wanted. Oh wow! So they gave us completely different direction. So we had to go back to start from scratch. Give them that. That was close, probably eighty percent, and then it was five or six rounds going back and forth. Just and this is before we even got design. Handled. We gave them exactly what they wanted four times. Yes. <laughs> That's pretty actually. You know, what's, what's your most wanted look like? What kind of type of client looks best for you guys? Medium range budget. They have to have a marketing budget. Okay. Um, now, they could be a startup. They could be just getting going, but they need a budget to spend on marketing. And then we can come in and try and, and of course, the bigger, the better, right? It's all, that's always the thing. Right. But the more money, the better results we can do for them. But they need to have identified a need for marketing and a budget to put behind it. Well, some people think they're smart and can do it themselves. But Steve can tell you, I'd rather run my own business versus having you trying to figure out what you guys are doing because I just don't get it. The, the truth is you, you could do it yourself, but you shouldn't. Right. Because yeah. your focus should be on your business. And if you're focused on marketing, that's great. But then kind of the worst thing that can happen, worst slash best thing that can happen is your marketing starts to work and now you've got customers coming in. So now you're, you're dealing with all these customers you got, which is fabulous, but you're not marketing anymore because you don't have time to do it. Yeah. So then the marketing falls off and then a few months down the road, you've handled the customers you brought in. Now you don't have any new customers. You've got to start marketing again. Whereas when you hire somebody like us, we're always on. We just keep things going for you. 
So in other words, stay in your lane, stick with your core competencies. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. 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 We have a financial a financial planner that we're working with right now, kind of sort of rebranding. He's not changing his physical logo or any of that sort of stuff, but we're rebranding his site and his look and his feel. And that was exactly his problem. He had somebody in-house that was doing the, all his social media and all his web stuff for him. And then he decided that, or actually she decided she didn't want to work there anymore. So she left. So then he started doing it and he, he, he just wasn't doing it because he couldn't fit that into his schedule. Yeah, there's only so, so much time in a day. Right. And right. that's why people, you know, people say, well, I've got somebody here that will do it for me. And you may, and they may be the best person on the planet to do it, but you're probably, if they are the best person on the planet, you're not going to end up paying what they deserve. They're going to leave and they're going to leave you in alert. And if that's why, if you're using a firm or outside entity to do that work, first you can hire and fire them when you want to. You can if you're not getting what you need, you go find another one, but they'll be doing what you need all the time. Whatever your schedule is that you figured out for social media posts, those will be handled. They won't go, oh man, I forgot to post something on Instagram the past three weeks. You know, there, there <laughs> the past three some, weeks, huh? Yeah, wow. There, there should have been something, Seen worse. Yeah. There should have been something going up every week right. or every two weeks, whatever your agreed upon approach was. Mm-hmm. So. You know, going back to branding, to me, I think about the Coca-Cola label. I think about the Golden Arches for McDonald's. To me, that was a brand, but I know it's more than that. Can you elaborate on that, Steve, a little bit? Actually, Tom's probably better to elaborate our, on our Tom? brand. Yeah. You- well, branding is a whole approach, right? So you need to identify who's your customer, what's your business, and are you consumer, are you corporate, are you B2B, um, B2C? And then what is the persona you want to attract or present to the outside world? And so, I mean, you can take, you can take it from doing a few sessions with a customer to try and bounce ideas off each other. If they've already, most of the time they have a name already. Mm -hmm. So kind of how you're going to create a logo or a, a look and feel that matches that name all the way up to getting focus groups involved where, you know, you can spend unlimited budgets on focus groups, on hiring a company just to redo the name, like uh, medical, for instance. So when they come out with a new drug, they do so much marketing dollars right. to find out what, like, what that name's going to be, who's it going to attract, how does it make people feel, does it make them feel happy, does it, you know, so that when they start pushing that product, then you can do the same thing for a company. So... That's and you guys can guide them through that process. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Good. At much lower cost than some of the bigger agencies out there, just because we're we're small, we don't have a lot of overhead. Hey, you guys. So let's say you, I wanted a website, which I did. You know, what are the top things that you would need? What's the the, the list of things that you would need to get something going for someone to start their own website and also social media campaign? So I'll, I'll take the the beginning, and then you just cut right me ahead. off whenever you want. Uh, most important thing for me is uh, what do you want to accomplish? What's your goal? Like, so what is, what's, what's the target we're trying to hit? And then beyond that, uh, creative assets, if you have them. So a logo, any images of your team or your products or something that represents your services. We can find either stock art or have a photographer come in and take pictures if, if needed to do all of that. But the more you have, the easier it makes it because it also gives us uh, – a better idea of what you're about. And mm-hmm. that's, that's kind of part of the discovery process. Yeah. Your, your existing materials are, are a good place to start. Um, and we'll try and formulate at least a first round from that print ready or digital ready materials. So your logo in several formats, depending on how we're going to use them. Um, any of the copy that you want to use, um, we've got access to copywriters um, so that if you want to take it to the next level, you know, it's something that you wrote yourself or your wife helped you out with and it's been working fine for now, but you want to amp it up, change that stuff. We can we can work with copywriters to get you what you need. Um, but any brochures you might have, any product, um, if you're if you're a consumer or product based company, we're going to want to see all that photography as well. 
And if you don't have it, we, we can get we can get shots done for that too. Yeah. So, I will say you were one of the better prepared clients that we've had. You had logos in different colors and you had all the formats, file formats we needed and you had some imagery we could use. And uh, you were also pretty good at articulating what it was you wanted to accomplish. Well, you know, we talked about it enough, so I just went to the went to the well and got it done. So that was appreciated. Yeah, and that and that's part of the process too is is talking it through and finding out where you are. You know, some people are ready to roll and they've got all their materials, you know, in hand and they're just here. Put it all together for us. And then a lot of others it's it's part of a bigger conversation. They'll start out saying, yeah, I just got to get a website done, but they don't really have business cards. They don't have a lot of the other stuff that, you know, they haven't thought it through what their approach is. Um, so we can help them set up Facebook, set up Instagram, um, build their website. And so keep it all so that it looks to get, looks like it was put together um, by a professional and it's all concise and, and consistent, and consistent yeah. Yeah. with their message or their brand. Right. That actually brings up another good point as far as social media goes. You don't necessarily have to go and market on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn, but you should probably have a presence there and have it look like consistent with your brand. Right. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be something you post to all the time, but consumers these days and customers in general, whether they're consumers or business customers, they will look you up. They'll look you up on your website. They'll look you up on Yelp if you're a, you know, a, a brick and mortar mm-hmm. type place. They'll look you up on LinkedIn. They'll look you up on Instagram. And if you don't have anything there, you lose credibility. Right. Yeah. And especially with the millennials, the younger, the younger people out there. And uh, that's, that's their go-to. You're looking for the electronic yeah. footprint, huh? Especially for cu- customer um, uh, B2C. Mm-hmm. Um, I was speaking with one girl and she said, if, if it's a company that I'm going to go look for clothing or any, any product whatsoever, if they're not Instagram, I probably won't buy what they have. Yeah. Wow. So, okay. and it's a little different in the, in the B2B world. It's, it's, it's more LinkedIn mm-hmm. and, um, it, like what we do, it's more of our, um, personal contacts and talking to people in advance because, you know, they're not necessarily going to believe the fluff that's on a website, yeah. but, but you still got to have it. Mm-hmm. So, And there's, there's other platforms that are either here now or coming along like TikTok's another one that's starting to go. I mean, people are still figuring out how to monetize that, but there's, that's always going to be changing. And again, the basic underlying premise is still going to be the same. It's just picking the right channel to reach the people you want to reach. I don't, I can't see TikTok for a business application. Can you? They're using it for politics. Well, yeah. uh, I guess yeah, so. Yeah. It's selling a lot of product. Wow. And yeah. uh, I saw uh, AOC did a Twitch yesterday. 700,000 people watched it. Do you What's imagine a campaign event that was 700,000 people? I don't even know what Twitch is. So Twitch is, it's a platform. It's owned by Amazon. Mm -hmm. Uh, They bought the company that um, all it really is, is you've got a camera on somebody and they're playing a game and you can see the game on part of the screen and their face like in the corner Uh, and they uh. just, they chat about it. They chat about the game. They chat about life. They chat about whatever. And there's just millions of hours being spent watching this content. Some people are playing Call of Duty. Some people are playing Fortnite. Some people could be playing Candy Crush or something super simple. And they're just yeah. talking while they play. And this, uh, I, I followed this one guy um, and he's he's playing Call of Duty and people are, are giving him stars and these stars have a monetary value. It's very small, but he's getting millions of stars. Wow. So Yeah, stars like he, a penny. Yeah, so it's, you know, millions of pennies. Right. That still has Those a value. Those add up. That's got a value, yeah. right? <laughs> there was a movie about that, I think. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Just a fraction of a penny. That's right. So, yeah, it, uh, it it all goes back to our initial philosophy is that you need, you need to be uh, thinking of marketing and using the tools to get it, to get it done because um, it don't, it don't get too wrapped up in that individual tool. 
whatever it may be. Because because we've had instances when we were doing um, a lot of the Facebook stuff that used to be likes was the thing you wanted. You know, everybody wanted likes on their page. Well, then Facebook changed the way they do things. Mm-hmm. Nobody really likes a page anymore. You don't. It's all in your newsfeed. You don't go to the individual pages. Yeah. But they're still following. You're still following that person or that company. You know what they're doing, but it's not directed back at their individual page. The important thing to me for branding is it's not just a logo, right? It's, right. It's it's all of the things that go into the logo. And then the why of the logo colors, right? Types, what type you're using, all of this, how your logo is treated, right? You can't just stack it on top of something else. It's all kind of intended to keep things very consistent and to make sure that anyone who's exposed to that brand starts to get the same feeling towards it because feelings sell products. Anything else, guys? Anything you wanted to mention, Tom? No, I think we covered it all. All of it? Well, no. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for being here today, guys. You know, let me give some information on you. All right, why don't you guys tell us how to get in touch with you, Tom? Uh, you can reach us through our website, which is insigniaindustries.com. Spell that for us. I I N S. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. That's Look at your phone. That's where it is. Yeah, it's I N S I G N I A Industries, I N D U S T R I E S. Dot com. Dot com. Give it for us again louder, Steve. Uh, Insignia Industries. So it's INS. <laughs> oh my God. You're, you're trying to get me to do I'm it. trying to. Yeah, you need to. You need to do right, it. Hold on. And you can always get hold of me at my number, 714 643 2500 with Sitch Radio, and my extension is 420. And I can always pass messages on to Steve and Tom also. You can also reach me at 949 436 5557. That was Steve talking. Uh, this is Tom. My number is 714-925-8920. That's my direct line. Go straight to my cell. So it's I-N-S-S-I-G-N-I-A uh, Industries I-N-D-U-S-T-R-I-E-S dot com. Com. Dot com. That's C-O-M, right? <laughs> C-O-M. Yeah. Thanks for being here, guys. Thanks for, Thanks having, for having us. us. Awesome.